what what are your initial reactions from what you saw from both teams in this one? Because I think there's a lot of big takeaways from both sides. Man, where, where do I even start, man? Where do I start? I mean, I guess all right, we're, we're just going to go how the game went. You know what I mean? From the, from the jump, clearly uh, the Nuggets made it a point of like, listen, we're not going to let Anthony Edwards beat us. Like with double teaming him, mm-hmm. getting the ball out of his hands, showing him different bodies, just trying everything to kind of throw his rhythm off. And it absolutely worked because his rhythm was off for the whole game for the most part. Um, making other people beat them. Jamal Murray got his rhythm going, which is a scary sight if you're the, the Timberwolves, you know what I mean? Like, you want to throw him off as much as possible. He had it going. It seemed like the Nuggets were kind of the, t- the normal Nuggets, you know what I mean? Jokic wasn't doing too, too much. He was getting everybody involved. They was knocking down shots. And they they went up big. And the Edwards were struggling. Um, so, yeah, that, that kind of what I noticed in the beginning. Then it's just like they just flipped a switch and locked down on defense. Jamal Murray really – didn't really do much in the second half in general. Um, Minnesota really just had people step up. Like, you know I mean? Nas Reed had a fantastic game. <laughs> it, like, listen, Nas Reed, who, he hooped. Um, even, like, a guy like like Carl Anthony Towns, he kind of held it down as well. Like, he's going to do his typical stupid Carl Anthony Towns stuff throughout the game. You, just, you can pencil him in for, like, four what was that moments. Just dumb fouls, like yeah. that's how he got some of the worst discipline in the league, bro. It's it's horrible, but that's the reason why they got Nas Reed to come in there when he's doing his whole what is that type of moment. So or fouling out. Um, even a guy like Gobert, which in the beginning was pissing me off because bro, it it almost looked like he was r- running the offense through Gobert, which was absolutely making me livid. Disgusting, bro. It was nasty. <laughs> I was so mad, but then again, you know, like later into the game, he was actually drawing some fouls. Um, he hit some st- stupid shots that it was just, I'm be honest, probably flat out luck, but you need a little bit of luck if you want to win the championship. So he actually didn't play too, too bad, like towards the down the stretch of the game. Um, really, realistically, they just locked in on defense. Anthony Edwards kind of used the defense into offense. I believe he, he stripped Jamal Murray, um, turned that into a dunk. Kind of got it going from there, hit the three to go into the fourth. Then kind of the whole Timberwolves team kind of rolled that momentum going into the fourth quarter and kind of never looked back. So realistically, it was just a matter of, you know, we don't really have it going offensively. Our guy doesn't have it going. Let's do what we do and lock in on defense and then use that to kind of turn our offense up. So that's kind of the main things that I've seen from this game. Cam and shout out Cam in the fat cat's paw. He in the chow IG say he knew the game was over when Gobert hit the dirt fade. <laughs> bro, I bro, I was like, there's no way he's made, no way he just made that. There's absolutely no way he just made that, bro. Like bro, what I'm looking at my about? TV like this, at least at least 30 <laughs> seconds. I could not believe and he, he didn't even just make it like he really switched it. Was it. Nothing cash. With it the was worst, jankiest looking form ever, bro. <laughs> bro, Gobert got some of the luck. The N one was like he just and threw it, was it up there. It was a nasty N one, like he blew what should have been the dunk, and he just uh, and it went in the bro, room. <laughs> bro, somebody said on Twitter, somebody said, bro, if you give Gobert a basketball and lock him into a gym and say you can't dunk by the morning, he'll have six points. <laughs> like, if that, bro, if, if that, bro. bro, his offensive game is non-existent. But when he's giving you, he made some free throws down the stretch. He made some absolutely lucky shots. I guess all of that is a plus because, like I said before, you got it. You there's some sort of luck that goes into winning a championship and going on going on a long playoff run. So you know, what I mean, you just you need that on your side sometimes. Uh, no, you you said the biggest thing, right? Like Ant struggled big time in this one, and it wasn't even you can't just blame him as much as it was a lot of times the Nuggets trapping him to get the ball out of his hands, which was a lot of what happened in game five. Um, and, and they they really stuck with that to, to try to have a BA, anybody but Ant beat us. And I in the video I just recorded, um, I said, I think this was not by the box score. I'm sure he's had better box scores. I can't remember off the top of my head. But from impact, I think this was the best playoff game Carl Anthony Towns has ever played in his career. For sure. Like when you mm-hmm. consider all the context of, the magnitude of the moment you're on the roll in game seven against the defending champs. The, and he didn't even have a great shooting night from the perimeter. I think he's like one of five, one of six. I think I have, a, I have a quote up here. Uh, yeah. One of six from three, but his, his effort on the glass to have 12 rebounds, obviously he has the huge 
put back dunk at the end of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, but his aggression to get downhill, um, more than anything, though, I, I think it's fair to say he was the best body up defender on Jokic the entire night. Like for sure. He was able to prevent himself getting back down under the rim in ways that Rudy really hasn't the entire series. And that genuinely was a big reason. Really, it sparked that third quarter turn for the Timberwolves. Those consistent stops that they were able to get on that side of the floor. If you go out and look at that, it's almost all cat working around the free throw line, just refusing to get bullied easily all the way down to the paint. Um so, like you said, aside from some of the ridiculous fouls, like the one that he had where he reached in the cookie jar for no reason um, at Jokic on the perimeter, like outside of that, just the impact that he had on both sides of the floor was huge. You mentioned Nas Reed, bro. The Nas. Whoa. We back? Hold on. <laughs> you good? Say something? Yo, 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 we back. I don't know what just happened. Like the Wi-Fi just tweaked out on my side for a second. The IG yeah. tweaked out too. But I think That's we about to say. Okay, as long as we as long as we good. As long as we still live, as long as we good. But, um, but no, like the way that he, he can come in and swing a game, he's six man a year for a reason. Um he was huge in this one. Jaden McDaniels, I think he only missed three shots. Um, in this game, like his shot making was massive, mm. like just from start to finish, everybody on Minnesota was so locked in, even when the shot shots weren't falling for them, they never really seemed like the effort from their end was wavering. They were like re- relentless, relentless effort. And then in that third quarter, once they started to turn the tides, you just could start to feel it. Like once they, once they cut into the lead a little bit and a little bit. It was like, bro, that run is never ending. I didn't mm-hmm. see a lot. Where, where did Mike Malone timeouts at? I didn't see a That's lot of true. Was going on. That's true. Um, And once they took that lead over, man, they didn't give it back. They gave up 37 points in the, the second half alone. That's crazy. Scored 32 in the fourth by themselves, gave up 37 in the whole second half. That's generational true. defensive performance by this Timberwolves team. Flat out in locked in. They just they locked in, but that was the big that was the key to honestly. This whole game was it really stuck with me. What um, I'm not sure if you've seen like what Ke- I think Kenny Smith said it. He said it again this game, but he also said it for another game when it comes to just winning a championship and being a championship level team is having those role players that will step up and hold it down on nights that your star player doesn't have it going. And then it, even if it's just a simple case of like, listen, just keep us in the game. And then our star player eventually is going to get it going, get it going and take us home. And that's kind of what happened this time. Um, Cause honestly, it's really just credit to, like I said, everybody on the Timberwolves kind of stepped up, did their part. Carl Anthony Towns, I agreed, played his best playoff game in general, just as far as impact, holding mm-hmm. it down. Even when, like when Ant didn't have it going, even in the beginning on the defensive end later in the game, rebounding just everything in general. Um, yeah, it was honestly just a full team effort, man. This this Timberwolves team as a whole is just a complete basketball team. That's really what it is. Like to be able to win a game seven on the road against the defending champs and the best player in the world with your star player shooting what six for 24, two for 10 from three is ridiculous. Like that, like that just shows how good this team is. Um, it's it's wild, man, because like it's it's that that's why you need these guys to step up because nobody now nobody's really gonna care that Ant shot six for twenty four. Now if they no. lost this game, Ant's getting killed. You know what right. I mean? So, um, shout out to the Wolves for actually stepping up and you know holding down. But uh, to me, that's kind of the biggest thing in this game. I want to take it to the flip side and talk about the Nuggets a little bit because, um, like we said in the last episode, what what was gonna be the key for the Nuggets to win this game? They needed to have particularly Jamal Murray step up. Jamal Murray stepped up. It was inconsistent in that he came out really hot and he really cooled off a lot in that third quarter, not even from a shot-making perspective. Like, it wasn't like he was missing. He just Mm -hmm. wasn't getting looks or taking looks. He wasn't looking to be aggressive to score. And Again, a lot of that contributed to the Timberwolves being able to get back into this game. But at the end of the day, 
13 to 27 from the field, 35 points. You, if you would have gone into the game and, and heard that that was going to be a stat line, you would have felt pretty confident as a, a Nuggets fan. Mm -hmm. I do have somebody that I mentioned it before. What was Michael Porter Jr. going to do in this game? Because he's been real quiet and a lot of it had gotten swept under the rug because they were winning. They had rattled off three in a row, but you know, he had really struggled shooting. And he's another one of those guys who, yes, he has length. Yes, he can rebound and defend. But if the shot isn't falling, I don't know if the value is there. And it's tough to say because, yeah, he fits so perfectly. When the shot is going, he has that flamethrower. The Nuggets feel unbeatable. Mm -hmm. When he's bricking these shots, I, personally, if I'm Mike Malone, this is game seven. I don't know. You might want to throw somebody else in there. Who though? Like so that I get that because it's like their team is young. Ah, right, bro. You, Pam Watson. But it's if, like if you're just like you're just looking for offense. Justin Holiday has had some spurts of knocking down shots in this one. It felt like, and it, it would be one thing if this was a one-off thing for Michael Porter, but like I'm gonna look look at his game log all the way back from was it game game. Game four. Game mm. four, they win, right? He, he took four shots, two for four. He had four points. Game five, they win again. He had six points. He went two of ten from the field, two of seven from three. Game six, they get Molly Wap, ran in Minnesota. He has eight points, three of nine from the field, one of six from three. Game seven tonight, seven points, three of ten from the field, one of six from three. And some like he's like chucking these threes. Like he's He's, you know what he is. He's Michael, the possession stops here, Porter Jr. Like, he's <laughs> going to let it go regardless. Seven attempts. It hasn't, attempts. For, it hasn't fallen for him in four games. Mm. So, obviously, hindsight is always 20-20. If they win, we're, we're not having this conversation, like, at this magnitude. I understand that. But the reality of the situation is the reality of the situation. He put up a stinker for four straight games from a shooting perspective. And for a guy who is – like that's what he's on the floor to do is to beat a flamethrower. Like if it's not falling, it's hard for me to see the value there. So I, we talked about needing him and Jamal Murray step up. Jamal Murray stepped up in a huge way. Jokic gave you what he could do, uh, you know, with the defense that was being played against him. Like as hard as Nas Reed and Cat and Gobert were regarding him up for him to wrap up with, I think he had 35, 36 points too. Um, he struggled super crazy from the three-point line in this one, but they literally were daring him to shoot. So it's like mm -hmm. he knew how to take them. He knocked down a couple, but two of ten from three is tough. But, you know, outside of that, he's, you know, pretty efficient from the field. If you remove the threes, um, he was killing, killing Gobert on the glass for most of this game. He almost had 20 rebounds, still had seven assists. But – it's just those little things along the way okay. in a game like this where we just spent all this time talking about how Minnesota's team from top to bottom, everybody that came in was contributing. Like you need everybody to be a contributor. And Michael Porter Jr. was a no show. KCP on the offensive end did knock down a lot of shots. So it just this this super dominant starting five, like they had some no shows in the most pivotal time possible. And it cost them in the biggest way. And now Jokic can go back to, to Serbia and with his horses and chill out for the offseason and no back to back champions again. Yeah. I mean, you pretty much nailed it. I mean, the biggest thing is no production from anyone else outside of Jamal Murray and Jokic. You know what I mean? Like, no one else was even in double figures. Uh, like I said, Michael Porter Jr. had to step up in against specifically against this type of team in the Minnesota to where you need the whole team doing well, like you said. Um, getting no production from him specifically, but just no one else in the starting five is bad, especially when you have no – like, really no bench production – ever from this Denver team. You know what I mean? That right. was always, that was already their concern going into the playoffs as a whole. Um, and that kind of came to fruition because they, well, they get ended up with what five bench points this game. Um, they just really haven't had anybody off. Like they've, they have people give them good like minutes at times. Christian Brown gives them good minutes, but when it comes to just scoring off the bench, they don't really get any of that. 
Um, so le- in that situation, you would need your starters to always be contributing. So anytime that, honestly, if you don't have at least three of them, I'd say playing well, it's tough because normally, uh, well, I'll say in this playoffs, like Aaron Gordon has been stepping up. Like he, there's been times where he's been the second best player on the team. He's been stepping up, but as far as those crazy like scoring games that he had, like that's not obviously that's not that sustainable. You need a guy like Michael Porter Jr., where that's his role, that's what he's supposed to do. He should be the guy that's stepping up and contributing from that aspect. So, I mean, we've seen it though. We said, listen, you get at least one of those guys to between Michael Porter Jr. and Jamal Murray to get it going, they probably win this game. I mean, it we still weren't wrong because when Jamal Murray what did have it going, they were up 15 going into halftime. Right. That's when he ended up not doing anything in the second half. That's when the tide turns a little bit. So it's even like I said, if Jamal Murray has not even a crazy first half like he did before. If he has like 70 percent of that, who knows in the second half? Who knows? You know what I mean? But credit to Minnesota's defense. because They locked in and made it a point to look. You're not going to beat us either. So if you're the Nuggets, man. It's crazy because it's like now we're going into the offseason. People are going to be like, oh, well, they need to add this. They need to do this and that. And when going into the playoffs, there was this unbeatable, crazy right. starting five. We, we struggle, struggling to find flaws with this Denver team. Right. Now, all of a sudden, there's like a got hole here. They got a hole here. It's like, you know what I mean? Now, all of a sudden, they got problems. So it's going to be yeah. interesting going into the offseason. They ran into the one team that was constructed with beating the Nuggets and Jokic in mind. That's true. As many times as we talked about that from the last season, we got on the Warriors a bunch because it was like, y'all are trying to make these moves to contend. Y'all getting smaller against the best player in the league, being a seven foot man from Serbia. Felt like the Timberwolves were one team that really were like, no, we're gonna we're gonna pay Nas Reed. We got Cat, we got Gobert, we're gonna pay Nas Reed. We need three seven footers, legit seven footers, and you, they're reaping the rewards of that now. It's it's crazy because, like you said. It funny. The funniest part about it is it really might just be the Timberwolves because you probably feel the same way. I feel like they could have beat anyone else in this playoffs. You, you even said it. You're like the winner of this series is winning the finals. I Meaning, still like, still feel that same way. Congratulations to the Minnesota Timberwolves. <laughs> but that means that, was about to, he about to hoist that Larry O'Brien. I don't. I don't see anybody else beating this. The, whoever won this series, I really feel that strongly about both of these teams. Mm, I, I hear you. It's just not definitely not a bad point. It's just crazy because it's like anyone else besides the Timberwolves, you could see the Nuggets winning, beating in this in the seven game series. You know what I mean? Perfect. So it's like it's just funny how the Timberwolves, like I said, were constructed so perfectly that they are the one to bring out those flaws. Which yep. then going into next season, because obviously you don't you never count the Nuggets out regardless of whether they they lost the series or not. You might have more teams starting to bring in more bigs or construct their team in a way to – well, I mean, they're going to have to do, especially if the Timberwolves win this series, they're going to have to do it for the Timberwolves anyway. But they're right. also going to be like, look, we might as well get more bigs anyway just in case we run into the Nuggets. So teams might be looking to, you know, actually construct their teams in a way to beat these two teams, um, which – and then the Nuggets are going to have to find a way to improve and move on from there. So it's going to be definitely an interesting offseason. Uh, I'm curious to see what the discourse around the Nuggets are going to be. Um but yeah, it's it's, it's going to be an interesting offseason to say the least. Yeah, Tim Connolly is uh, he's cooking, bro. He, he is. is. <laughs> he constructed one of the best offenses ever, and then dipped and said, "Let me go make the one team that can stop that," and and pulled it off. He's just he's just having fun, bro. He's just having bro, fun. He, he's, he's just playing my league right now. Yeah, he's challenging yeah. himself, bro. <laughs> bro. We in his sim, bro. We not even. It's not the NBA. He just do whatever it's he not. wants for real. Crazy. Thank you.